Russian Dial Day Boxing Nation. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So while I was interested in seeing how Lomachenko would look in his return bout against Jermaine Ortiz, I was more interested in seeing what he would actually say after the fight about fighting Devin Haney. I was wondering, is Devin Haney going to get in the ring? Will we get a face-off? Will Lomachenko make it official that he's fighting against Devin Haney next, just like he did when he jumped in the ring after a Teofimo Lopez fight? and made it clear that that was who Lomachenko was going to fight next. But it turns out when the undisputed champion Devin Haney jumped in the ring to size up Lomachenko for the very first time, Lomachenko had a little bit of a different type of energy. Loma kind of gave off mixed signals when Devin Haney entered the ring. You couldn't really tell if he really wanted the fight or not. Devin, what did you think of Vasily's performance tonight? Uh, I think it wasn't the best performance, but, uh, you know, I know that if me and Loma was a fight, you know, a better version would be on, on that night. But um, congratulations, and uh, hopefully we can get it on. You have said... He's lightweight? He's this lightweight? <laughs> He's a big lightweight. Huh? No, it's heavyweight. <laughs> now... In the, ring, in the ring, I'll show you. Okay, okay. I will be, I will be ready. Loma says, okay, okay. I will be ready. You know, when you hear Lomachenko say, is this lightweight? This is heavyweight. It comes off like Lomachenko is saying, why should I have to fight this guy? Look at how big he looks. And when he says big, he's really talking about his height. But remember, Lomachenko, he fought Luke Campbell, who was taller than Devin Haney. And he never said that Luke Campbell was a heavyweight. That doesn't sound like a whole lot of confidence to me. It doesn't come off as a very confident Lomachenko. We can see Devin Haney's confidence. Devin Haney is the undisputed champion, and he's the one watching Lomachenko's fight live and getting in the ring and telling Lomachenko, let's do this. Devin is very confident when it comes to fighting Loma. It's supposed to be the challenger that goes to the champion's fight, watches live, jumps in the ring, and challenges the champion, right? And I just have a feeling, if Devin Haney would have fought after Lomachenko, and they both fought in the States, I don't believe Lomachenko would have attended this fight and called him out in the ring. And this is not to suggest that Loma won't take the fight because he did say multiple times that he's ready. He's ready to take the fight. I'm just saying clearly he does not sound as confident as Devin Haney does. I mean, Loma, he just did a recent interview on DAZN where he was asked, who's the best fighter out of the three, Javante Tank Davis, Devin Haney, or Shakur Stevenson? Lomachenko, he picked Shakur Stevenson. Now, that part alone is not that surprising that he picked Shakur. It was what he said afterwards, why he picked Shakur. And he basically said, it's because when it comes to Devin Haney, he got hurt in the Linares fight. Like basically implying that Devin Haney doesn't have a chin which is clearly a talking point that Lomachenko got from the race fans on the internet. Because if you truly believe that Devin Haney, he can't take a punch because he got hurt against Linares, why would you be talking about how big he looks? That won't matter because you believe he can't really take a punch, right? We also hear race fans on the internet say Devin Haney has no power and all he has is a jab. So let's just put all this together. Devin Haney has no power, he can't take a punch, and all he throws is jabs. If that were true, Lomachenko and everyone else would be lining up to fight against Devin Haney, just to become undisputed. But the truth always has a funny way of breaking free. Actions speak louder than words. And the other boxer's actions is exactly what exudes the truth. Lomachenko was put in a position where he was forced to tell the truth about Devin Haney. You said that you are willing to make any concession that Devin Haney wants to make this fight. How bad do you want this? Look, I, I'm ready. I, I told before, I'm ready and uh, I'm ready for any, any option. 
anytime, any place. I heard those words when you were going to fight for the undisputed title. How do you feel about Lomachenko saying, whatever you want, let's just get it done? That's what I like to hear. I took the risk. I went over uh, to Australia twice. Uh, everything that George Cambosos mandated to me, I signed up for. So we'll see well, when we go to negotiate it. When you look at Devin Haney and the way he fought against George Cambosos in his two fights, what did you see? Look, he is an undisputed world champion. You know, I, you can you can talking about world champion. He is a top fighter. He that's why he is a world champion. You know, it's kind of weird because there was another part of this interview, the same post fight interview, where Lomachenko actually said, "I need more time to prepare." For some reason, that part of the interview is not on Top Rank's channel. I heard Lomachenko say it when I was watching the fight live and he was doing a post-fight interview. But once again, for some reason, I can't find that clip. But it was interesting because when Lomachenko said it, he wasn't even answering a question. Uh, Bernardo Usana asked him something else and Lomachenko in return, he said, I need more time to prepare. Hopefully, that doesn't mean he's going to turn down the Devin Haney fight. Once again, Lomachenko, he did say, on multiple occasions during this interview that he will be ready. But let's just hope when he says he will be ready, he's not talking about being ready for vacant titles once Devin Haney vacates and moves up to 140. And he really is saying he will be ready for Devin Haney to fight for all of the belts. It's rather ironic because fighters like Devin Haney is often being compared to Floyd Mayweather. And just like they say about Devin Haney, they also used to say the same things about Floyd Mayweather. He had no power. His hands were brittle. But yet, when the majority of fighters stood in front of Floyd Mayweather, they were a lot more reluctant to throw punches. Floyd Mayweather would often turn volume punchers into gun-shy boxers. And that was because they knew that if they threw the wrong punch, they would pay dearly for it. That's why George Cambosas was reluctant to let his hands go in the first fight, you seen what happened in the second fight. George got more aggressive and he got beat up more. This is also why when Floyd Mayweather fought Manny Pacquiao, surprisingly to some, he actually threw more punches and landed more punches than Manny Pacquiao because he had Manny Pacquiao so confused and so worried about the counters. The reason why I make this Floyd Mayweather comparison is because for those of you guys who remember, it wasn't that long ago that old media, people like Dan Raphael and other people from old media, they started to compare Lomachenko to Floyd Mayweather. Some even went so far as to say that Lomachenko would have beat Floyd Mayweather. So my point is, now that people are comparing Devin Haney to Floyd Mayweather, that is more of a reason why Lomachenko should really, really want to take this fight by all means necessary. Not saying that Devin Haney is exactly on Floyd Mayweather's level as of right now, but there's no doubt about it. There's only a couple fighters being compared to Floyd and Devin is definitely one of them. Also, not to mention, remember guys, when Canelo Alvarez lost to Floyd Mayweather, what did old media and the rest of the race fans say? They made excuses for Canelo saying that he was too young, right? And Floyd was way too experienced. But this is the beauty of the sport. Like I keep telling you guys, the truth will always come to light. Because just like Teofimo Lopez was in Canelo Alvarez's shoes when he beat Lomachenko, Devin Haney will also be in Canelo's shoes when he fights Lomachenko, which completely destroys the Canelo wasn't ready at 23 excuse and proves that Canelo Alvarez just was never on the level of a Devin Haney. And he never will be. Let's just go off of the race fans narrative. If Devin Haney had no power and he had no chin and he only has a jab, which means he really only has one hand, that means you fans should love Devin Haney more than any other fighter today. Why? Because this is a true David and Goliath type story. Devin Haney is the David that continues to take down all of the Goliaths. How is Devin Haney able to beat these fighters with all of those disadvantages, all of those flaws? If that's the case, Devin Haney should be the underdog in all of these fights. And we all know, usually people root for the underdog. 
But the truth is, those race fans, they never believed any of those things that they were saying. Once again, they use these words like boring, has no power, has no chin, or that's why I don't like them, et cetera, et cetera. These are all cold words to justify not liking him because he's on the coincidental list, because he is a threat, they feel, to their favorite fighters. So the only way they can justify disliking him is by using these cold words. But the problem is they cannot stop Devin Haney from being as dominant as he has been. And it's only going to get worse for the race fans because Devin Haney and other fighters that look like Devin Haney that these race fans can't stand are going to continue to dominate in the sport of boxing. If Lomachenko takes the Devin Haney fight, there's almost no doubt in my mind. Lomachenko, he loses that fight. If Lomachenko struggled against a hand-picked opponent that was his sparring partner when it comes to Jermaine Ortiz, no disrespect to Jermaine Ortiz, but he is a completely watered-down version of Devin Haney. Ortiz is a good fighter. They could probably beat some of the other top lightweights. But when it comes to Devin Haney, Devin does everything better than Ortiz. I think I told you guys at the beginning of this video that I was looking more forward to what Lomachenko would say after the fight. You know, if Devin would jump in the ring and would Lomachenko confirm and announce that he's fighting against Devin Haney next. I was more interested in hearing Loma say something like that because I felt the Ortiz fight was a foregone conclusion for the simple fact, once again, that Lomachenko, he handpicked Ortiz as an opponent and it was his sparring partner. So I felt the fight would kind of look like Wilder knocking out Hellenius. What I mean is Deontay Wilder, he picked Hellenius as his return opponent because that was his former sparring partner and he felt he knew Hellenius inside and out. I'm not saying I thought Loma was just going to knock out Ortiz in the first couple of rounds, but I thought he was going to go in there and completely dominate him and that wasn't the case at all. He barely got past Ortiz, which means to me he doesn't have that much of a chance against Devin Haney. And this is the first time I believe I've ever said that Lomachenko barely has a chance against any opponent. There's no doubt about it. Lomachenko would be a very tough fight for Devin Haney, but I see Devin Haney winning the fight decisively. If Teofimo Lopez can beat uh, Lomachenko and beat him the way he did by controlling range, Devin Haney is way better than Teofimo Lopez. He has a higher, a much higher boxing IQ taller and longer than Teofimo Lopez, which spells serious trouble for Lomachenko. Let's see how serious Lomachenko is about taking this fight. We'll find out in the next couple of days if Lomachenko is really serious about fighting for Undisputed in his very next fight. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, and inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs or defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com.